Hi there, I'm David Batsoffin and I host a travel blog called Travel and Things. Every Saturday during October, I'm talking action photography with Simon McDonald. And today is no different. Simon, how are you doing? Good morning, David. Yes, I'm doing extremely well. It's a beautiful day here in Cape Town. Uh, the wind has dropped, uh, which is unusual, and it's a beautiful sunny day. Great stuff. Now, we're talking um, action photography, as is the theme this month. What are we specifically looking at this Saturday? Uh, today, I thought we'd look at the aviation side of things um, with, a, with a, a slant toward uh, helicopters, working in and around helicopters, shooting helicopters, uh, and then uh, just general aviation. Uh, there's a few aircraft, fixed wing aircraft in there, but uh, I have more helicopters pictures because that's kind of what I love doing. All right, so share your screen and let's chat about the images. There we go. Miracle of modern technology. We have a man on a harness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, this image, I, I wanted to to sort of say, you know, I don't often crop uh, the the aircraft out, uh, the, or the tail rotor out, and the legs out, but this one just works for me. I, I like the fact that it's uh, you can see the the hoist operator, the winch man. Um, looking out of the machine and the uh, the rescuer being hoisted. Uh, it's my good friend, Ruloff. And uh, yeah, I like it. I, I thought in black and white, there's a bit of drama there. Mm. And uh, it just it just kind of worked. You, you know, you talk about cropping the tail rotor and cropping the legs off the guy on the, on the hoist. But I believe, Simon, that that is what makes the image. If you had the whole picture, it's once again, I think, as we discussed last week, it's what, what tells the story. And I think here, uh, yeah. doing that, it changes the, the whole perception of what people are looking at. And it gives you that up close and personal feeling. And once again, uh, you've done it in black and white, which just changes the whole feeling of the picture. Yeah, we, we'll discuss that a bit more in, in detail, the, the uh, black and white and, and color uh, a little further on in the in the slides. Um, I think the drama of black and white, for me, uh, it's it's just, uh, it's chalk and cheese. But some images do work uh, in, in color, I think, better than they would in, in black and white. And as I say, I have a few examples of that okay. uh, later on. Let's keep on scrolling, shall we? Let's, uh, let's move on. And yeah. Oh, lost you there. Sorry. There we no, go. There we um, go. So again, uh, another black and white. You can see I love my my uh, my monos. This uh, this image of the Air Mercy Service um, helicopter hoisting a, a patient. You can see the external load operator um, doing his his thing there. I mentioned uh, in our intro last week about uh, the rotors and about motion in the rotors. Uh, again, not always necessary to have a full disc, I don't believe. Um, for me, it's important to have a little bit of, uh, of motion, but not always to have a full disc. If I, I think if I'd have got a full disc here, I probably would have lost uh, some sharpness um, on the, 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 the load operator's hands and on the, the harness, the bridle of the, of the, of the bag. So, um, so I like this, it worked for me. and. Uh, I think the I think the black and white definitely works as well. I've got this in color. Obviously, it's uh, one of it's it's one of the shots that I use in a book for the Air Mercy Service. But it's for me better in black and white. Just a matter of interest. Where were you when you took this image? Um, so I'm actually this was during a training operation um, here at uh, Kirstenbosch in the in the at the landing zone that the forestry helicopters use. Um, so the local metro uh, rescue teams and the mountains, um, the Mountain Club of South Africa, their rescue teams do a fair, fair amount of training with um, Air Mercy Service and with the Air Force. And this is one of the places that they do that. So this is just in the foothills uh, surrounding uh, Table Mountain. Um, I can't remember if I have any images with Table Mountain in the background with the helis, but, uh, but that's where it is. It's, okay. it's right here in the middle of suburbia. <laughs> and not a power line in sight, luckily. 
There we go. And it's important you mention that because I'll, I'll discuss it uh, with a couple of the other images of, of shots that I like, but I've messed up, if you like, because I haven't taken things uh, into account that, that uh, to me can uh, not ruin the image, but just detract from, uh, from what you're looking to get. Isn't it amazing, Simon, if we look at this particular image um, where the focus is, and when you take the picture, that's obviously what you're looking at. But into the peripherals come all sorts of other things, as you just mentioned. And then you only see those once you look at your image on a, on a screen. And you go, that's going to be hours of post, post uh, work that I've got to put in to fix this or to clean it up or to, check, or to yeah. manipulate it in some way. Or I'll just scrap it and use another image. Yeah, it does happen, especially around helicopters. Of course, right here, we're, we're directly in the rotor wash and, and underneath an Oryx helicopter, you have like eight tons of rotor wash. There's a lot of dust. There's a lot of uh, debris, um, obviously, depending where you are. Uh, you could have a lot of sea spray um, and th that does have to get uh, cleaned up. There's always dust. It's one of the things I discuss with later is, um, is some of the challenges of working with with helicopters and obviously primarily it's the it's the dust and and so on around your lenses you can't change lenses people tell me they're taking the wide angle and they're taking their their, their uh, 400 uh, and they'll change it in the helicopter and i always tell them don't, don't do that you'll end up uh, giving the your repair guys a lot of work yeah. um, so that's just one of the challenges and as you say you you can spend a fair amount of time cleaning up an image taking the dust spots out um, and, and here, well, uh, you know, I thought that I'm obviously on the hoist here and uh, you can see the, this is the ring here with the hook underneath it connected to my harness. Um, and I thought, well, it worked because it's sort of, it's there. I could have gone tighter and uh, just got um, the, the hoist operator, the winch man. Um, but uh, I thought, yeah, it's part of the story. Yep. And, uh, and again, that, uh, that movement in the blades is there but yeah there is a lot of post working around uh, helis you do you do a lot of work i suppose if, if i was to be super critical and maybe even if this was a competition image some people may say in the lower right corner um there's a bit of sky and that detracts a little bit from the rest of the picture i hate those sort yeah. of people i'm not one of those it, it, it's part <laughs> of the story it needs to yeah. be there it gives you gives you a Gives you a size of the helicopter. Otherwise, it's just an amorphous blob with with a with yeah. A you know, on. that's it. It's uh, it's one of those. It's one of those things. Like I mentioned uh, about uh, how many photographers it takes to to change a light bulb. <laughs> yeah. um, take forty one to change the bulb and forty to thirty nine to tell you how they would do it. There's no uh, <laughs> there's there's no way that everyone is going to take the same type of shot. Um, and I think it's important that you develop your own style. Yeah. And, and quite often, uh, I'll look at a photo on, on the social media platform and kind of know who the photographer is before I even look at the post mm. because you can pick up a style. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's important. But I hear you. That bit <laughs> of sky draws your eye. So. This is one of the, the few times that I tell people that, well, you know, you always need motion in the in the rotor blade. You always need to have some blur there. But of course, if the helicopter's on the ground, you don't need it. And, yeah. uh, if you're not putting it into your image, if you're not slowing your shutter speed down to get a bit of motion blur in the rotors, then it's almost like taking this photo and Photoshopping it into the sky. Just because it's there and in the sky doesn't mean it's actually flying. So I, I do tell people, if you want to take a photo of a helicopter and it's in the air, motion blur, if it's not, then you're fine. And, uh, and I, so that's the, kind of the reason I put this one in is just for that, just to show you yeah. that uh, not all the photos have got motion blur. <laughs> um, a, lot of the action, a lot of the action takes place on the ground. So uh, this is a team getting ready to be, uh, to be, I don't think they were hoisted in here. I think the helicopter will actually land and uh, the team would climb in to the machine. And I think I've got the photos of that coming up. Okay. But yeah, so so just because there's helicopters, I think uh, always look around and look for the uh, for the action, be it on the ground or in the air. And 
that's kind of the story here. And I noticed so far all of these have been in black and white. And they, they I mean, yeah. like that. That for me works in black and white to the to the nth degree. Uh, in color, yeah. that would be almost a happy pic picture. This is much more yeah. um, somber. Let's let's put it that yeah. way. That's it. I mean, the, the thousand yard stare that we that you read about uh, in combat soldiers, you'll see it often in rescuers. Not all rescues are successful, and uh, they do take their toll. This is Rob. He's a very very highly experienced rescuer. He's been doing it for many many years. Uh, and I caught this one, um, and I thought that his face kind of says it all. Yeah. Uh, and as you say, in color, well, the T-shirt is red. Um, okay, his pants are gray, but he's got uh, blue laces, and the helmet is orange helmet. And it does it lightens it lightens the mood. Whereas here, yeah. what I really wanted to portray was the emotion, um, and you kind of can tell from the shot that it's that it wasn't a successful day. Yeah. When rescue becomes, what do they say? When it goes from, oh, there is an expression. When, when, uh, rescue from to rescue to recovery. recovery. Yeah. yeah. So here's one that I've put it in color. Um, again, uh, this is the Berg. You can tell from the terrain that we're in the mountains uh, of Drakensberg. And I left this one in color just because it's got the contrast in there. Um, you can see that I left flight paramedic on the chap shirt, uh, Andrew's shirt there, just so that it also tells or, or adds to the story. Yeah. That, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a call. And this is the, the, again, going back to black and white, this is when we're trooping in uh, after that helicopter landed to collect the team. I think I played here, yeah, looking at this shot, I played a little with um, the NIC software, um, silver effects. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't do it often, but it's almost like an HDR, but in black and white. And uh, I thought it worked in this photo. It's a tight crop of the team um, entering the, the heli. It does indeed. Do you, do you like Again, the smell of one... napalm in the morning, Simon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Have gas. You can't yes. beat it. <laughs> this, uh, this image, for me, worked better in, in color. Um, in black and white, it just got lost in the background. Mm. So the red of the of the hel of the helmet and of his jacket, the the Mountain Club of South Africa rescue teams uh, were wear red t-shirts and red jackets, um, and the colours of the packs kind of just worked for me. It's also a training exercise, so uh, I normally would not take a picture of or publish a picture of a victim. Um, or of wreckage uh, of any kind, if it's got identification marks. Uh, you know, you never know the, the next of kin haven't been yeah. informed in that. But in, in a training environment, of course, you don't have to worry about that. And this young lady uh, played our patient for the day. She's one of the canine um, handlers, canine search and rescue team. And uh, she was a, a willing participant. Uh, we also say it's quite important for everyone on the team to, uh, to experience going up in the stretcher and, and being a patient because uh, you then know what the patient goes through when, mm. you, when you're doing it for real. So uh, I like this one. I, I thought it was just a, a good angle and uh, yeah, definitely better in color for me. Simon, the, the ring on the winch or on the, on the cable, is that to stop that um, stretcher from spinning around? So no, no, that's uh, that's just part of the of the hoist makeup um, with the with the with the hook uh, underneath that. The the line on the right of the camera here, this yellow line here, is called a tag line, and that is uh, to prevent the spin. Okay. There's a rescuer. There's a rescuer on the floor. Oh, sorry, on the ground that is uh, holding that and just making sure that the that the the litter doesn't spin. And as they arrive at the door of the heli. Then uh, the jockey, which is this rescuer in the picture, uh, will release the line. You can see the quick release uh, knot there. Oh, okay. Next, and he'll release that. Uh, it'll it'll drop down and be collected by the team on the ground. Okay. So um, that's how they prevent that spin. Okay. Um, now we move on to the Air Mercy Service, um, Air Sea Rescue. You can see the the National Sea Rescue oh, Institute nice. boat there. Um, 
this was a, a tragic event uh, just off Chapman's Peak. So we're, I'm actually standing on Chapman's Peak Drive there. Um, and uh, again, the rotor blur, you can see it quite clearly with the AMS machine. Uh, I love the, the red and white and yellow. It really does uh, lend itself to, to some great uh, images. Um, and I take it. I take it from what you say. This was this was a recovery and not a rescue. Yeah, yeah. Sadly, this was uh, this was a, a young lady who had fallen. Um, it was actually her birthday, um, so it was uh, doubly tragic. I think mm. uh, she felt her death on her birthday. But um, but yeah, at least the guys could get her get her back and uh, and give some closure for the family. But uh, not a pleasant day. I should imagine not. Um, I've also, so just talking rotor blur there with the, the red and the yellows and the whites, but I thought this is a, an opportune time to bring in um, the rotor blur in, the, in, in aviation in general. Here's uh, the late, great Glenn Dell, um, a true gentleman flyer in the, in, 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 um, in the aviation circles, and the, I think he was the world champion. Uh, aerobatics. I'm taking off here in the Red Bull Extra, and you can see it's uh, it's got a full disc. So much easier in these type of aircraft, and 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 the proximity you get to them to get that full disc. Uh, this is at Virginia Airport. He's uh, just taking off, and uh, I liked it. I had the disc. I was obviously panning, um, but you can see the starburst on the cockpit. So this one I liked, but yeah, the 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 rotor. Well, the propeller in this case has got to have some movement. Definitely. And if there's no propellers, well, there's always something that you can look for here. The, the, uh, the, the afterburner. afterburner with the gripping. Yeah, you can grab the, the you can get a little bit of the flamgat, they call it. Uh, <laughs> Looks like it's so, blowing smoke rings. <laughs> it does, it does. So that's the gripping. And here, the tiger moth. Again, a full disc, and this is one of those images that I say I liked it until, until I, I looked uh, more closely, and it, they, I should have perhaps waited a second. Uh, I don't like the telegraph poles in the background; they look like they're impaling yeah. the, the aircraft. <laughs> so, uh, again, we spoke about timing last week. I think if we, if I had just waited uh, a second, um, it would have been a much better image. Uh, so yeah, be yeah. cognizant or take note of, of your surroundings. Uh, we talked a little bit about safety uh, and being aware of, of things that are around you. We'll also think about your photo and make sure that uh, there's not going to be something there that you don't want afterwards. Mm. I'm assuming that you've flown uh, in the is, Tiger Moth before, thing. Simon. Yes, yeah, it's like one of my favorite aircraft. I, what, I think. Uh, what is the experience the, they're like? They're so graceful. They're, they're... What is the experience oh, amazing. like being amazing. in an open recommend... cockpit that you can fall out of? Uh, well, you know, I, I haven't never fallen out of one, but uh, but I think to me, it's uh, it's like being on a motorbike with wings. It's just amazing. You you you. I have the same feeling when I'm micro gliding, but even on a in a a micro, uh, what do they call these things? A micro, micro light. Uh, yeah, micro lights and gyros. I love them because of the open air nature okay. of, the, of the flight. But uh, the tiger moth, oh, it's such a graceful lady. I mean, it, if you have the opportunity, and there are uh, uh, quite a number of them still flying, and you can get a flight uh, for a couple of grand, I would highly recommend you do it, David. It's it's awesome. And a wing walk. Well, I, I, don't, I don't even know if there's anyone doing that now left in this country. Um, I know that uh, Ivan van Schaar has got the, uh, the, the Boeing Stearman, and that was a very popular aircraft for doing wing walking mm -hmm. uh, in the States. I'm quite sure they still do it using that aircraft, but I've not seen anyone in this country do it. So okay. uh, yeah, that's not for me. <laughs> Okay, this uh, again, I like this one because you see the rotor, but you don't actually see the helicopter. Yep. Um, this is that same scene off Chapman's, mm -hmm. but uh, with, the, with the heli being uh, lower on the cliff and much closer in, uh, I just, uh, you know, it's a helicopter because the rotor's there. 
it's a really cool image. Although, you know, there, there's been a picture on Facebook lately, and I, I don't even remember what it was there for. Uh, but I think it's a guy swimming, but it looks like a body floating in the water. And it, it sort of makes me stop every time. And it's the same here. Your rotor actually yeah. looks like that thing could be submerged. And that's what the NSRI <laughs> are looking for. Right beneath you, fellas, right yeah. beneath you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look yeah, up, look well, down. If, it, I, I guess, if the image gets you thinking and gets you talking, then it's achieved uh, an objective. It has indeed. <laughs> this one, uh, well, it's not often we get, uh, we get a sea that looks like this. Uh, this is <laughs> right here in, in Fishhook. Uh, this is Fishhook Beach. Um, this was obviously the Netcare helicopter, Netcare 6, uh, which flies uh, down here. It was the first day that it was in operation. So the day they launched, they, they had a, it was a motorcycle accident, I think, in the main road of Fishhook. And uh, the helicopter came around, came around and landed. And I got this image and I thought, wow, I mean, the sky and the sea and the mountains don't look like this on a good day. <laughs> um, so to have this image with the, the Netgear machine was was too good not to not to capture exactly um, and and your horizon a few seconds dead level oh, of course but I'm <laughs> sure I did that in post <laughs> <laughs> I'm nothing if not honest you know uh, I mean I do try to get them straight as possible but but uh, Lightroom is your friend when it, it comes is. to uh, getting it right. Um, a few a few seconds earlier, uh, there was a lot more action because you've got the firefighters on the beach that were doing the um, uh, the cordon, you know, protecting the the landing zone. So as the as the aircraft got off, I've got the sand blowing and I've got the the firefighters in the picture, um, and uh, that's uh, for me a, a better image. But I just for, everyone loves this because of the colours and yep. because the heli is the the old airwolf. Um, yeah, back to black and white again. This uh, I like this one. This is the ER twenty four um, BO one hundred five. Um, what I liked here, this pilot is a friend of mine, Sam, and she had just taken off, and it was more to capture an image for her. But I then realised afterwards that I'd managed to get the the figures in the bottom right hand corner, and it's kind of left to your imagination as to what's going on there. They just dropped off. Uh, or, or just taken off with a patient, and this is the family of the patient, uh, and what on earth happened to the head of the chap on the on the extreme right? Um, so there's a and his arm for that matter, few, uh, and and his arm. So yeah, I liked it. I thought it worked. Uh, <laughs> Sam loved it, and so mission accomplished. And again, look at the disc. There's a yep. pretty much a full disc there. Yeah, it, so it indeed. must have been really fun. <laughs> yeah. um, a more recent shot this was again the AMS uh, helicopter doing some work with the National Sea Rescue the, the rescue swimmers from uh, Station 18 so they would be deployed from one of the rescue boats out at sea and then picked up and this is called a short haul long line um, the patient is is picked up with the rescue swimmer on the hoist and brought in to the to the base. Um, again, I left the the, the Toyota Land Cruiser stuck in the surf. Well, I'm a, I'm a Land Rover driver, so of course I had to leave the Land Cruiser in there because it's stuck. Any uh, any opportunity? I could have done a tighter crop, but uh, yeah. Any opportunity to stick <laughs> it to the opposition? Absolutely. There's always the banter with the Land Rover and Land Cruiser. Yep. Uh, so uh, that's why the Land Cruiser stayed. Uh, and eventually was was pulled out by the Sea Rescue, but by their tractor, not by one of okay. their boats. Um, yeah, the story once again. Uh, so I left the 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 city of Cape Town fire and rescue vehicle put that in there because uh, it adds to the story. This was a this was a call at Cape Point. You can see the the Cape Point buildings, so there's no doubt about where we are. The helicopter landing or actually taking off, and it just uh, left the patient with us. And uh, again, 
bit of bit of motion in the rotors, and the story is is there. That the, it's obviously a medical call. Yeah. Lovely machine, uh, the old Lynx, the, uh, although it's an Air Force machine, it's operated by the Navy. They, these are the machines that work with the, the Navy landing on the decks of, the, of, the, of, of our ships and uh, doing some work with Station 19, which is the Air Sea Rescue Wing of the National Sea Rescue. Um, and this is in Hart Bay, I think. Yeah. Uh, doing a little bit of work with them. There was an Oryx, and I think I have some pictures of that too, but the this beautiful Lynx, uh, I love it. I think it's uh, it's like watch, watching a wasp uh, flying around. <laughs> Simon, you're very lucky and privileged because this is part of what you do. So you get access to a lot of these aircraft uh, for work purposes. Is there some way that maybe an amateur photographer could set himself or herself up maybe on a weekend waiting for a helicopter to take off and land from somewhere to, to emulate some of the images that you've shown us? Sure. Um, you know, well, obviously the rescue side of things is a bit more difficult because uh, if it's a real rescue, you're never going to know when you when, when the head is going to arrive. Um, from a training point of view, it's not always as easy either because it can be set up and the weather can, can become... Uh, uh, well, it can cancel uh, any training at the last minute. So you can't really put out uh, any notices to everyone saying, well, it's definitely happening on Sunday. So a lot of it is luck of the draw. Um, I'm obviously kept in the loop um, from, from that angle and from the groups. Uh, but there, certainly there's places that you can go, uh, your, your local airports and even uh, some of the heliports to get uh, helicopters in general, but yeah, you know, the the action and the, the people hanging underneath them, uh, or in this case in the door, um, a little bit more difficult. But yeah, if you if you live if you live down here, you'll see it more obviously than you will see it at, at, uh, up in Joburg because the training in in Joburg would happen in the Michalisburg, for instance. So you okay. take off from Otkorps Air Force Base and fly into the Michalisburg and then begin training, whereas here, the training is at the coast. Uh, it can be off of um, Backoven Beach or, or uh, in this case, Hart Bay. So anyone that's driving along gets to see it. But to, to make a, to, to try and plan it, not easy. Okay. And the other thing I yeah. should imagine is ask permission and make sure that you and the people that you're photographing are not going to be put in a position of any sort of danger. Yeah, look, generally, uh, this type of event won't happen uh, with any danger to the public. So this is obviously over the bay. It's out, uh, it's out on the water. Um, with the previous uh, image that I showed with the Air Mercy Service, yeah, they, they'll be landing on the beach, but the, where they're landing is demarcated. There okay. are dedicated teams to securing the landing zone uh, that prevent access and... and so, so they do take the they take the safety aspect very seriously, and you are close enough. And if you if you have a decent camera, a decent lens, you can carry on and take the photos. Um, there's nothing top secret about it. And uh, so, from a permission point of view, well, if you're outside of any cordons, they're not going to stop you taking okay. your, your images. Great stuff. Okay. Do we have more images? Uh, a couple more. So, just a tight shot oh. of the Oryx. Uh, getting the, the pilot. Nice. Uh, this is again. This is in Hart Bay. This was that same exercise, the same day. Uh, just the Oryx was uh, coming towards me, so uh, a, a bit of a long shot. But uh, but yeah, and yeah, same day. This is the different aircraft, the, the Oryx, um, looking for something different. If you look, because mm. it's over water, a lot of that moisture you'll pick it up in the rotors. You can see the the the, the spray. Uh, around there, the, the vortex, the, the heat pays from the engines mm. dropping down on either side, but uh, no denying that it's a sea rescue exercise. There's the, uh, the chaps well, in flippers. the <laughs> yeah. fins, I suppose, well, to give them the correct, um, the correct name. Yeah. Fins, quite right, quite right. And I believe, yeah, that's, that's all I have for you today. Um, uh, we, uh, we will carry on, uh, I think next week we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the motorsport, which like you were mentioning access and how, how people can get to there.
to, to, to photograph that much easier to shoot motorsport just get along to your to your track your local track and uh, and buy a ticket and you're in and you can take all the photos you want so uh, we'll talk a bit about motorsport and uh, that's all i have Great today stuff. simon do you want to 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 clear the screen and come back to me um and sure. let's just go be, uh, full screen uh while we say goodbye there we go thank you very much uh, once again uh, as i've always said when it comes to action photography when I grow up, I want to be Simon McDonald. I really and truly do. <laughs> Simon, uh, if people want to, to find out more about you and your photography, where do they go? Um, well, I'll post most of the images will be on Instagram. Uh, uh, my uh, Instagram name is uh, Click Simon. So at Click Simon with, without the second C, C L I K Simon. Um, and uh, yeah, they can drop me a line on Simon at macmedia.co.za and or they can uh, contact me via the social media platforms. I, I'll always answer the answer any messages Great, there too. Simon, thank you so very much. Once again, a wonderful chat. I look forward to next Saturday with eager anticipation. Bye for now. Bye now, David. Thank you.